Hello again, and welcome to the RIO Gateway Ops video series. We already explored what an RIO Gateway is and what kind of hardware you can run it on. So today, let's put it into practice by setting one up. The use case I'm exploring is a personal gateway for my own R drive data, as well as just testing out the permaweb. I want to be able to load the decentralized R drive app, query a layer two index for my files, and share some photos with my close friends and family. For this task, I could use my PC workstation or MacBook, but I wanted something that was always online in a small form factor that was cost-effective yet powerful, kind of like a Raspberry Pi. So here I have a Canakit Raspberry Pi 4 that I purchased off Amazon a few years ago. This little computer packs a 64-bit, 1.5 gigahertz quad-core CPU with 4 gigs of RAM. If I could go back in time, I probably should have picked the 8 gig model for that little bit extra memory. It comes with a sturdy case to protect the motherboard, a quiet little case fan, some heat sinks to keep the chipset and CPU cooler, and a reliable power supply. These are important because we're going to be pushing this Pi a little bit, and I want to make sure it keeps up with my own needs as well as those that I'm going to be sharing it with. Storage-wise, it comes with a 32 gig SD card, which should be enough for the OS, but these kinds of cards might not perform well enough, and it's just not enough storage for my use case. So I sprung for a two terabyte Samsung portable SSD that I could use with the Pi's USB 3.0 ports. Its network interfaces include a gigabit ethernet port with support for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. With the added Bluetooth 5.0, it's basically everything you would need for a gateway and some more. To see the full Canakit Raspberry Pi 4 parts list and buy this equipment of yourself, check out the links below. Okay, so now let's move on to setting up the Pi for the RAO gateway installation by deploying our operating system. There are a few ways to flash a storage device for the Raspberry Pi, but today I'm sharing my PC desktop and going to use the Raspberry Pi Imager. It lets me easily select and download the OS I want and configure some host settings before flashing. First, I'm going to select the operating system. I'm going to go with Ubuntu 22 64-bit LTS Server Edition. I don't need anything more than a terminal, and this version is supported on a Raspberry Pi 4. Remember, the gateway is currently in beta, and while it should deploy on most newer Linux versions, we're still understanding what works and what doesn't. The can of kit comes with a USB dongle for the SD card, but I've plugged in my 2TB SSD because I want to flash the OS directly onto it and format it as an EXT4 single large drive for all of my OS and app data. We can also modify some of the settings needed to administrate the Pi. This includes things like the host name, SSH keys or admin password, as well as Wi-Fi credentials. I find it easier to use stuff like this, but it's up to you. Finally, we write the operating system to the disk. It takes a few minutes for the Raspberry Pi imager to write and verify. When it's done, you can safely disconnect the SSD and connect it back to the Pi. Then let's connect our HDMI cable a little handy wireless USB keyboard that I have, along with the power supply. It's going to power on and automatically deploy Ubuntu with my pre-configured server name, Wi-Fi, and admin credentials. Back on my desktop, I should be able to SSH in and continue to configure the gateway prerequisites. Our docs library located at ar.io will guide me through the rest of this deployment. So back on my desktop, I'm using my favorite SSH client, and I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi. First, let's just make sure our hardware, especially my disk, looks OK. I'm going to do that by running df-h, followed by ls-usb, then ls-cpu. OK, things are looking good. Let's upgrade and reboot our device first. This is going to take a few minutes. We can do that by running sudo apt update followed by sudo apt upgrade. Okay, now that that's done, let's just give it a reboot because we just deployed a new version of the Raspberry Pi kernel. After it's done rebooting, let's reconnect to it. Now you can run an RIO gateway as a standalone Docker container. This makes it super easy to deploy and manage, whether it's on this tiny Raspberry Pi or in a scalable cloud. I can install Docker Compose, which also includes Docker as so. Let's run sudo apt install docker-compose. Now, I always like to give Docker a quick test 
just to make sure it works. You can do that by running sudo docker run hello-world and then follow that up with sudo docker-compose-version. This will let you know that both softwares are working great. In case we want to build and run the code ourselves outside of Docker, we're going to need Node.js version 16 or higher. So let's deploy that now. We'll first add the exact version of Node that we want, and then install it with sudo apt install Node.js. Now we also want to use Yarn as our package manager, along with deploying some other build tools like GCC, G++, and Make. First, we'll add the latest version of Yarn. We'll run sudo apt-get update, and then install them all with sudo apt-get install gcc, g++, make, and Yarn. We'll finish it up by installing some other tools that we're going to use later. This includes Git for cloning the repository, Nginx for load balancing and SSL termination, Certbot for generating our wildcard certs for free, and SQLite, in case I want to inspect any of the RIO databases. We can install these all by running sudo apt install git certbot nginx sqlite3. Now that I've installed all the prerequisites, it's just a matter of making some adjustments to my network to ensure my node is publicly accessible. I'm going to use HTTPS, so I've logged into my router and set up port forwarding for ports 80 and 443 to my Raspberry Pi's IP address. Congrats, your Pi should be all set for installing an RIO gateway. Now there are lots of ways you can automate the deployment of these prerequisites along with the hardening of your Raspberry Pi. But we will save those advanced topics for another time. Next episode, we're gonna install and configure the gateway, as well as finally start to access the PermaWeb. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you then.